Hello and welcome to the playlist on SAP and Power Platform here on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel. In the previous videos, we have seen several examples of how the usage of the on-premises data gateway in combination with the SAP.NET connector enables the SAP ERP connector to read, update and create data from the Power Platform in SAP. Unfortunately, things are not always going exactly like planned. So in this video, we want to take a look at some of the issues you might be facing and then troubleshoot them. I've seen all of these topics with customers and I hope that this video will save you some trouble. We will take a look at regional configuration, issues with the wrong version of the SAP.NET connector or installation mistakes, firewalls preventing access, not enough permissions in the SAP system or other problems with the remote function calls. With all these issues, I first want to show you the problem so that you can see the actual error message and then we will fix it. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's start with the first step. And the first step is I've just installed the on-premises data gateway. Everything is looking fine. But for some reason, if I go to Power Automate Data Gateways, the on-premises data gateway doesn't show up here. And I mean, this is very, very easy to detect. Um, I mean, you can already see that I installed it here in the region Brazil South. And um, in my Power Automate, I'm um, in, in the US. So obviously that's the issue. But uh, you would be surprised how often I see this specific error. So I just want to highlight, I mean, one easy thing is um, potentially there are some other steps that you might have done wrong, or maybe there are some firewall configurations issue so it's always good if you go here to diagnostics network performance test if you run here a new test then you can just check the results here and you can see or ideally you should see um, a lot of success messages you you can see it's, it's really trying to access um, a lot of different services on azure via the service bus um, and in my case obviously everything is successful but again here at the very top you can already see it. we are trying to connect to brazil south and actually, if we double check here in our Power Automate environment, um, I can just go to here, um, the Admin Center. And in the Admin Center, if I go to the environments, I can check the regions for all the environments that I have. So in my specific case here, all of these um, environments are in the United States. And obviously, that's the issue. So what I need to do is I just um, uninstall the on-premise data gateway, I install it again, and this time I select the right region. So as soon as I have it installed in the correct region, if I switch over here to Power Automate, and if I refresh this page here, or actually, so you can already see it, and then if we take a close look, you can actually also see that it's online. So perfect, now we have the configuration or the connection between our um, on-premises data gateway and the power platform. So if I would like to use this now and create a simple connection to my SAP system. then we can see that the authentication or the connection is actually not working. Does said connection not found, please create a new connection. So why is that? Well, most likely um, we forgot to configure the on-premises data gateway. So in my specific case, we've actually forgotten to install the SAP.NET connector. Let's actually here open up the development tools in the Power Automate platform here, where I can easily track all the network tra traffic that comes from this call here to the SAP system or to the on-premises data gateway. So let me clear the logs here and try to click on create again. Now we can see there's the ping to the um, on-premises data gateway. And we can actually see the results from there. You can see there's already this uh, 404 error. Let me actually quickly stop the recording so that we have a little more time looking at the error messages. And if I take a look at this 404, then we can see there's an unable to establish connection error messages here. So I know this is a little complicated to, to detect, but that's actually one of the reasons why we're not able to connect to the SAP system. I mean, the on-premises data gateway gets the request from 
the client here from Power Automate, but it doesn't know what to do with that. So let's actually now install the SAP.NET connector for that. First, restart um, the service. So I'll just do this here. I just restart the on-premises data gateway now that the SAP.NET connector is installed. Let's get back to Power Automate. Let's clear here this list and do another test. So this time we can actually see that this test was successful. I mean, we didn't provide an RFC name, but you can see that now the connection from the client, from the on-premises data gateway, um, or from Power Automate to the on-premises data gateway um, actually worked. It wasn't able to connect um, or retrieve any meaningful RFC, but it was able to make this connection from the um, Power Automate flow to the on-premises data gateway. So actually, if we take a look at this um, test connection, yeah, at the test connection, we can see that the um, status code was 200, so everything was fine. We were able to call from Power Automate the on-premises data gateway. Now let's say I'm pretty sure I have installed the SAP.NET connector. But if I go in here, if I create a new connection to my SAP system, it still fails. There's still an error. If I again open up the development tools and I run the creation again, you can again see here this test connection. I again get a 404, but as mentioned, I am pretty sure I have installed it. Now let's take a closer look at that. Go to Diagnostics, and here, let's enable the additional logging. So I'll just toggle the switch here. I click on Apply. We need to restart the on-premises data gateway. And then let's run it again. Let's go back here to Power Automate. Um, maybe let me clear the trace here. Let's click on Create again. Obviously, this will not fix it, but we'll collect additional information um, from the connection between Power Automate and our on-premises data gateway. So you can see the call still fails. We still get this 404 error message. Now, if we take a look at the log, so if I click on export logs, and now if we take a look at this query execution report for SAP NetWeaver, you can see this is, this is the first one that has actually the name SAP in it. If I take a look at this, then you can see all this very long error messages or, or log entries. And actually, if you scroll to the right, you can see, so this is where we are trying to connect to our SAP system. We're trying to do this test connection where we are calling the SAP system for the for the first time. But then if you scroll to the right, you can see there's here, could not load file or assembly, SAP.NET um, connector version 3.0. whatever 42. So it could not, the on-premises data gateway could not find the SAP.NET connector 3.0 um, with all the dependencies, um, it's not there. So what I would recommend is just really double check that you have installed the right files. So, so first of all, obviously, if I take a look here at the installed files, I can already see that I have installed the .NET connector version 3.1, which is obviously not the correct one. But let, let us double check and actually go to here the folder of the um, assembly cache, the global assembly cache. And there, if I go into this folder here, you should see an entry SAP Enco, SAP.NET connector, basically. If I go in there, you can see, well, in my case, actually, because I, I had some, some previous tries, but you can see there's, there's both, there are both versions available. There's the 3.1 and there's still um, the 3.01. So it's very important that we don't need this 3.1 at the moment. So, so what I'll do is I'll uninstall the 3.1. Perfect. And then just double check, really make sure that the 3.1 is gone. If not, then just go in here, delete it. You can also take a look at the other folder. There might be this um, SAP.NET connector utils. Just make sure that really only, um, if at all, the 3.0 is there. And with that, just install um, the .NET connector 3.0. So let me do that quickly. Let me restart the on-premises data gateway and let's do the test again. Let's create the connection from Power Automate to the SAP system or to the on-premises data gateway. And you can see the connection was successful. 
So now I am able to connect from Power Automate via the on-premises data gateway to the SAP system. So another scenario, and we're still with the .NET connector. I'm trying to create a new connection. So let me click here on create. And as before, it's failing. So this test connection still, or again, returns a 404 error. Now, if I take a look at the um, installed files on my on-premises data gateway, I can see that the .NET Connector 3.0 is installed. So this time it's not an issue with 3.1. But actually, if we take a look at this assembly cache that we previously also looked at, we can see that there are no SAP files in here. So when installing the on-premises, uh, the SAP.NET connector, I forgot to select the check mark to actually install the files in this global assembly cache. So let me quickly do this again. I'll run the .NET connector installer. And then here in this step, it's really important that you select the install assembly to the GUC, to the global assembly, assembly cache. So if I do this, if I get here to this directory, if I refresh this, then I can see here the SAP ENCO folder and you can see here is this 4.0, DLL file. That is mandatory, that has to be there. If that's not there, then the whole configuration is not working. So if I do this, I've now installed it. Let me actually restart the on-premises data gateway. And now if I go back here to Power Automate, if I click again on Create, then the test connection is successful. So let's say I have installed everything according to the documentation. I have the on-premises data gateway installed to the right region. I have the right SAP.NET connector installed, so the version 3.0. Now, if I click on Create, everything seems to be fine. But when I do the actual connection, when I try to open up an RFC, if I try to call a BAP or something like that, then I get this error message here. So in a lot of cases, this error message is already good enough. So here, for example, it says incorrect name or password. So the first thing that I would do is I would just go to ideally to the, the system where the on-premises data gateway is, or, or maybe um, on my local computer or something like that, if, if I cannot do this directly on the system where the on-premises data gateway is, is installed, I open up the SAP GUI and I just give it a try. I'll just try to connect with the very same credentials um, that I provided in Power Automate flow um, and try to log on here. So if I do this, I can see, oh, I made a mistake in the password. So um, you can actually see that the login failed here. And if I now go back to Power Automate, if I change the connection here, I update here the password. Then if I go back to my flow, it should work now. Next thing I want to check is, so we have the right password and everything. We, we verified that, but for some reason, the connection is not working. Very often it's that maybe this um, server name is cor or incorrect or the client is incorrect or even the system number is wrong. So if I do this and if I try now to look for bar piece, I get this very strange um, error message that for example here, the host name is unknown or something like that. So if I do this, I mean, it is fairly self-explanatory. I mean, obviously this is not a host name that I can call here from this browser. But if I go to the server where the on-premises data gateway is installed, I should be able to ping this server. Or ideally what I can do is I can just open up the SAP GUI. And from the SAP GUI, you can already see here, for example, the server name. This is the server name um, that you're using or that the SAP system or the sub GUI, the sub logon is using to connect to the SAP system. Actually, if I right click here, if I check the properties, I can actually see this is the server name. This is the system number. So these are exactly these variables that I need to enter here. So I can see the system number is 00. zero. And in my specific case, the server name is this one here. So these are the connections. Now, what is still missing is this client here. 
And actually, again, one easy way to check this is if I just open up the SAP GUI, then here, that's the client that is typically specified by the SAP system. Now, this is something that can depend on your SAP system. Obviously, in a lot of cases, there's a default value, which typically works. So I'll just give it a try here with the client 001. So let me double check. I'll just log in here with my users and it's working. And you can see here down here, it says now this is um, my system identifier and I'm connected with client 001. So, so that's the, the client that I'm using. And that's exactly the same parameters that I need to enter in here. So if I change this to 001, I go back here to the bar piece, then we are fetching the call. And after a short period of time, everything seems to be good again. So if I um, just start typing again, now it's okay, it says this, this specific BAPI does not exist. But um, you can see that the initial connection to the SAP system is there. So, so it says foo function um, is not found, function module is not found. But if I just stop, start typing in here, then we would get, um, as we've seen before, the list of BAPIs back from the SAP system. It takes sometimes a little while to fetch all the information, but then you should really get the full um, list of BAPIs and or RFCs. And again, this is something, um, this, this error message clearly shows that we have the connection, we can retrieve the information. It's just that this specific BAPI is not there. For the last example, we want to take a look at missing permissions in the SAP system. So for example, if I search for this RFC for this specific BAPI, I can see an error message from the SAP system saying no RFC authorizations for function module. Um, actually, in, in a lot of cases, or in some cases, even you are, if you are an SAP all user and potentially have all the permissions, you might have some permissions missing. So in my case, what I've created, I've created a, um, a completely empty user. So this user doesn't have any permissions. And obviously this user isn't able to call anything on the SAP system. So what we can do, we can um, select the system trace. We can turn on the system trace and really look for an authorization check with a user that actually has all the permissions in the SAP system. So here from Power Automate, I'll select my user, which has, um, yeah, every permissions on the SAP system, and I perform all the steps that are required to look up um, BAPIs in the SAP system. So you can see everything worked. I, I get the list of BAPIs in Power Automate. So back in the SAP system, I can switch off the trace and I can take a look at the authorization checks that were executed in the SAP system. So here, for example, you can see a list of um, authorization types. You can see a list of um, objects like the S underscore RFC. You can see the RFC function search module that was um, executed. And I can leverage all of this information and create a new role, a new profile in the SAP system that I can then assign to my users that want to have access um, from Power Automate. This is obviously a, a task that would be performed by your SAP basis admin. But just to outline the um, steps on a higher level, uh, you can just yeah follow these instructions here. Once you have traced and collected all the required permissions, and you have now created a new um, profile um, that has all the required roles uh, for um, function modules in place, then you can, dis can switch the user in Power Automate. And if you do that, you can see the full list of RFC services um, in Power Automate and really can start creating your scenario. I hope that these troubleshooting tips that we outlined here help you to get started with using the SAP ERP connector and BAPIs and RFCs in the SAP system. Typically, it's these smaller things where you might have missed some, some small thing that you can hopefully easily fix. And I really hope that outlining or showing the errors and the resolutions helps you to get started with SAP and Power Platform. Thank you very much for watching.